In today's episode, you must have your director's permission to enter the building. My mother wished she'd specified further. When I say no salt, I mean it. So let's get started. You must have your director's permission to enter the building. Hi everyone, I recently executed a bit of malicious compliance that I thought I'd share with you. During COVID we haven't been able to regularly access our office and have instead had to work from home. Most of my team are field-based anyway, so it hasn't been a huge problem. Next to our main office is a workshop slash storage area that is managed and accessed only by my team. We use this to store equipment and materials and carry out some work in there. Typically one or two team members will be there each day though it could be as many as five. If staff are collecting and dropping off equipment they might need two or more visits per day. On the rare occasion we do need to go into the main office we have to get permission from a director. We would normally do this a few days in advance once we had a piece of work that required access. Without this permission, security won't let us in. As the offices are in a city center location parking is expensive, but our employer will provide it in our own secure car park. To access this car park again you also have to email for permission. At some point someone noticed that staff were requesting parking in the car park, but not access to the main building. I was asked about this by the facility manager as there was a concern that people were trying to get free parking for personal errands and not work. I explained that staff were carrying out work or collecting equipment from the store and I'd given them permission. I was told that this was unacceptable and only our director could give permission to access buildings. I decided the best way to prove my point was with a little malicious compliance. I did a few checks and saw that there was an almost immediate opportunity. I instructed my staff that they weren't to access the workshop slash store unless they had permission. I said that I knew it was ridiculous but I had a plan and everything would be sorted within a week. I also told them that for the next few days we would be catching up with all our mandatory training and odd jobs. I told staff if any requests for work came in to ask the customer to call back later in the week and I would delay any new jobs being allocated for a few days, this all happened on the Tuesday. Wednesday and Thursday were spent catching up on boring admin and e-learning and then Friday arrives. I allocate jobs to staff and advise my team that if they need access to the workshop slash store then they must email for permission and entering without consent could lead to disciplinary action. I advise that they should wait by the security desk at the main building until permission was granted. A few hours into the day I start getting emails from my staff saying they've needed access to the store and have emailed for permission but haven't heard back. I advise that they wait. After another hour or so I get an irate phone call from the facility manager asking what's going on. I explain that my staff aren't allowed in without permission, and so they are waiting by security, so there are no allegations of them sneaking into the workshop. He asks why permission wasn't granted in advance, and I explain that the work requests had only come in on that day. He explains that the director is on leave and can't grant permission, but he could grant in his absence. I refused and said that only our director could give permission. I agreed to ask the staff to leave for home and to postpone their jobs. Monday rolled around and I got a phone call from the director. He'd received complaints from the facility manager and a few other senior managers about the situation. Thankfully he realized how ridiculous the situation was and said he'd only agreed to keep the facility manager quiet. It was clear that I'd orchestrated the situation, but the director was willing to take the blame for the issue. The decision was reversed and now staff don't need permission. One other plus point is that I've stopped receiving email reminders about my team members' training being out of date. My mother wished she'd specified further. CW, mention of scarification body art, no graphic description, no photo. First time post to MC on mobile. But this is one of my favorite stories about my younger adulthood, and I think you may appreciate it. My mother and I get along great now, but it has been a rough road at times. My father passed when I was young, so it's just us. She paid for my US education, my mom is a nurse, and has my best interests at heart, but is her own person, sometimes slow to warm up to new ideas she doesn't understand very well. 
I have always been her weird kid. I love body art. Tattoos, piercings, etc. Have always fascinated me, and I've always wanted more. I discovered scarification at a younger age and one day, while I was in college and living at home, mom caught me looking at some on the computer from one of my favorite scar artists. The gentleman in question had pierced me before, is accredited by all the correct institutions, etc. Also conveniently, his studio is only one state away from me. Mother? Became very upset at the idea of her little baby, I'm an only child, doing this to herself. So we had a chat. Why can't I do this if I'm paying for it? I argued, rather maturely, for myself at this particular age. My mother's response boiled down to, I'm paying for your housing and your college. Any money you make? Would otherwise be going to those things. So you have to restrict how you spend it. And I refuse to allow you to spend it on this. Cue the MC. So there I was, one wonderful afternoon, browsing the space old people social media, pre-book face. There. In the bulletins. From none other than my favorite scar artist. One free, small, cutting available. Bingo. Awesome artist was teaching an amazing out-of-state derby girl how to scar. It was a complete win-win. I got the art, she got the experience. I tipped, of course. When I got home, mother was unhappy. As you might expect. I had to remind her, no, you didn't say I couldn't do this, you said I couldn't pay to do this. Big difference. Mom did not want to hear any complaining about it after the fact. Which I felt was more than fair. Taking off that first bandage definitely involved swallowing a couple audible noises, for sure. I love my art to this day, over a decade later. I don't necessarily recommend it to anyone else, but I am very happy I didn't wait, or let myself avoid doing it out of fear or any number of other excuses. Mom was more careful for a time about how she worded things to me as a result, although I didn't live with her for much longer after that. I still love my mother and we get along great these days, especially now that I'm running my own household. But I still think back to this oddly wholesome story fondly. Thanks for enjoying it with me. When I say no salt, I mean it. So this was well before COVID, so I might be fuzzy on the details, as this was back when I worked at a burger joint in the middle of a small city. A small one, but it gave me a chuckle, and I was reminded of it after reading an earlier post about someone falsely claiming a salt-free diet for a party. Some dude walks in, with the most condescending look on his face as he looks around our establishment. We advertised as a place which catered to dietary needs, including vegetarian, vegan, organic, and religious diets, and this dude at least doesn't look like the type such a place caters to, but I don't get paid to judge. He orders a typical burger, the joint's default, but with no salt on the patties. Not a problem, people have done this before, we easily prepare an unsalted double patty burger. This time, however, when he bites at his face is a look of disgust. Me, is something wrong, sir? Customer, there's way too much salt on this burger. Me, that's strange, we didn't put any salt on your burger, as you asked. Customer, as if. When I say no salt, I mean it. I am on a no salt diet as per my doctor's orders. Me, oh really? Well why didn't you say that to begin with? Let me just make a new burger for you. QMC. Our place had special policies the moment a medical history or specific diet was mentioned. For minutes later, handing him a lettuce wrapped double patty with no pickles or bacon. Customer, the F asterisk CK is this shit? This isn't a burger. Me, actually sir, it is a properly salt-free burger, as you requested. Customer, but there's not even a bun. Me, our burger buns are made with salt. Customer, now studying the burger closely where are the toppings I asked for? Me, our bacon and pickles are both heavily salted. Since your salt-free request is a result of a dietary restriction, not just a request, we are obligated to remove any instances of the ingredient in question. 
Don't worry, we didn't charge you for the bacon. The customer then bit into the burger, stating that it was terrible. Not just that the lettuce wrap was far inferior, but that the meat was tasteless. Well I'm sorry sir, but not only did you ask for no salt, hence the tasteless, you triggered our establishment's dietary policy by making your request based on a medical need. My manager had to explain to him that if he wanted a new burger, he would have to pay for it. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share, and we will see you in the next video.